My brother and I were young, both 15, when we had our first sighting of something we couldn't explain. Up until recently, we called it the alien because we had no way to explain what it was. We were growing up in a rural area in Michigan, not completely secluded, but with a good amount of farmland and woods surrounding our house and general area. Around this time, Call of Duty was still good and rather popular. We also used to play airsoft and had ghillie suits and camo gear. One night around 2 a.m., we're playing Call of Duty when we get an itch to have some fun. We plan to go on a night raid up our road just to see how sneaky we can be getting out of our house and such. We connected with walkie-talkies so we can stay in contact with airsoft guns in hand. My brother had the ghillie and I had some black clothing on. We chose to go on either side of our dead end road, heading towards the open farmland half a mile up. As we were walking up, we were on comms regularly, giggling about how sneaky we were. It wasn't until we made it a quarter way up, around where the tree line on the side of the road my brother was on began, that I noticed something odd. Something was off in the trees behind my brother. I couldn't make out exactly what it was at first. To be honest, I get a lot of anxiety talking about this next bit. I calmed to my brother that he needed to move to my side of the road. He asked why at first, but when I sprang back quickly to just do it, he proceeded to run quickly across the road. What I didn't tell him was that I was seeing a tall, lanky figure with glowing red eyes just about five feet next to him standing in the trees. When he moved to my side of the road, I barely had it pointed out as he immediately started to ask why I had him come over when he was cut off by his own vision. I asked if he could see it, and when he said yes, we both let out a little bit of an, oh shit. Not knowing if it was real, we ran through possibilities. Could it be one of those owl decorations? No, there weren't any out here, and there were no branches. How about just a figment of imagination? No, we both saw the same thing, and looking around, it did not change the way it looked. Real? That's when it moved. Not much, but enough to see that it happened. I looked to him, and he looked to me. Stated that on the count of three, we were out. We never had ran so fast back to the house, and we didn't look back, because we were far too terrified. I will begin by letting you know that sleep paralysis is not, and never has been a recurring issue for me. The two instances this phenomenon happened, once in grade school and recently as an adult, reaching my 30s. I can't remember my exact age, but I think it's safe to say I was between 10 to 12 years old at the time. It was the day before Valentine's Day and I was very sick with a fever, upset I would be missing out on my school's festivities and sweets the following day. I was sent to bed early and terribly ill as I dozed off. Now, this flu could have attributed to my experience. I have thought about the possibility of it being some sort of fever-induced delirium, but some details following have made me not entirely positive this was the case. I must have been awoken between 12 to 3 a.m., and I was laying on my side facing the wall my bed was pressed up against. I awoke with a feeling of a presence in my room, and I assumed it was my mother checking in on me, as my fever was pretty bad. I called out to her and was met with silence. At this point, I knew who or whatever was in my room was not my mother. Fear took over my rationality. It wasn't that I couldn't move. I was too scared to. I did manage to roll onto my back and kept my eyes locked on the ceiling. I didn't want to look at it. It was at this time I began to feel a sense of peace and my dread dissipated. I began to feel a comfort from the presence. As soon as my senses calmed, I'll never forget what I saw next. It was not human. It was long. The digits on the hand were unusually long as well. The hand was slender, graceful, and downright creepy. It had a luminescence to it like I've never seen. 
As soon as it made contact with my forehead, I was out cold. The next morning I awoke in my bed, and I shit you not, completely healthy, no fever, no trace of my previously drippy nose and nasty cough. I felt a strange sensation of well-being even. I went immediately to my mother's room and asked her if she had been in my room, and confused, she informed me that she hadn't and commented on my strange behavior. I told her what I could recount from the previous night's experience. My mother even went as far as to call it my angel. Now on to the present. I feel it's relevant to say that I have seen multiple UFOs throughout my life. It may also be worth it to say that I live in a very rural state. I have seen UFOs alone, in groups, and with people who can verify their trajectory, so I know I'm not insane. Both day and nighttime sightings. Aliens and UFOs do not cross my mind often, as my life now is busy. About one month ago, I had another experience that shook me up badly and made me recall the encounter I had as a child. I awoke around 12 or 3 a.m. to a distinct feeling of a presence in the room. I thought immediately we had a break-in and the intruder was in my room. I was on my back and filled with so much terror that I couldn't move. I have a nightlight adjacent to my bed that I share with my fiancé. He was sleeping on the side closest to where I assumed this thing was. I was petrified, too scared to look at the side of the bed, and instead saw the shadow of this thing cast on the wall right beside me. It had to have been no taller than four feet. From what I could tell from the shadow is that it was slender, with a large oval-shaped head. Again, I couldn't bring myself to look at it. It has bothered me that I couldn't bring myself to look at it in these two experiences. Something inside of me said, It's all over if you see it. Instead of feeling calm, this time it felt like my life was in danger. I didn't get the good feelings I had with my previous encounter. I was out of my mind with fear and found I was unable to scream or move anything except my fingers. It raised its hand up, and I instantly recognized it, even by the shadow. It was the same sort of hand I saw in my room over ten years ago. At this point, I could feel my fingers pinching my fiancé's thigh, but he wasn't waking up. This fueled my panic. I was so scared, I actually fainted. I can't recall any dreams or details from there. The next night I did lay in bed with the night light on, lights off, and asked my fiancé to stand on his knees by the bed. His shadow mimicked an accurate projection placement of whatever was blocking the light the night previously. I have been deeply troubled by this sense, and have no other occasions of sleep paralysis in my entire life. So, was this just some sort of freak brain chemistry hiccup? a lucid nightmare, or actually an encounter with an interdimensional extraterrestrial being. I saw a thing in or near the woods on three separate occasions now. Each time I saw the thing, it was in a different state along the east coast of America, and each time the sighting was fleeting. I'm in my 30s now, and the sightings have several years between them. The first time I saw it, I was in high school, and this most definitely was the time that I got the longest look at it. The second time, I only caught a glimpse, and I'm pretty sure, but not entirely sure, it was the same thing. The third time, I got a clear look at it from the distance, but it caught me off guard, so I stumbled as I was taking a step and lost sight of it. I have been calling it a thing, because I have no idea what it is, and quite honestly, I don't even have a good guess either. It was not a Sasquatch, a wild man, a rake, a lizard person, or any other creature that I have found through my incredibly frustrating recent internet search on the subject matter. Maybe a shapeshifter of some kind, because the first time I saw it, the thing changed its form for sure. First sighting, Southern New Hampshire, 2000 or 2001, summer probably, I don't remember exactly when, but it was well after midnight. 
I'm going to take some time to explain this first encounter in as much detail as I can recall, even though it happened all so fast. It literally lasted only about 10 seconds, but it's still the longest amount of time I have spent truly looking at the thing. I was walking to a friend's house from the apartment complex I lived in late at night. To get from one place to another quickly, you had to cut through a small patch of forest. A couple of times before, we had someone shine a light on us, and once he fired a shot in the air to try to scare us. It never stopped us from cutting through his yard, though. It did, however, teach me to be stealthier when cutting through, and so on this night, I was creeping very quietly through the trees as I went. The forest was in the valley between my apartment complex, some houses, and the neighborhood where my friend lived. The valley dipped down into the middle with a steep incline surrounding it, and so at first, I had to go down into the valley, and then at the end, I would walk up exiting the tree line right onto the street where his house was. Once exiting the tree line, one would be standing on the side of the street with the end of the road about half a mile to your right, and the entrance to the neighborhood about the same distance to the left. The houses were spaced apart decently. The night was very dark except for the areas around the houses and a couple of street lights of which there were very few for the amount of space. I got through the valley no problem this time. At the exact moment I came out of the tree line and onto the edge of the road, something caught my eye to the left, emerging from the woods across the street. It stumbled awkwardly out of the dark woods and into the view right under the street light. At first, and just for a brief moment, it looked like a shadow. However, I heard a sound coming from the dead leaves beneath its feet and I quickly realized it wasn't a shadow. Its body shape was like that of a starving child, maybe three feet tall, that you might see in a third world country, but its legs and arms were so thin that there appeared to be no way it could support the creature's body weight. It was dark, but from what I can remember, at the ends of its frail looking limbs were just nubs, no hands and no feet. Its movements were the creepiest part, honestly, and they were the first thing that threw me off. I can't even really explain how absurd and unnatural its movements were, and how it was standing on those tiny legs. It moved forward from the trees and towards the street extremely awkwardly, with a couple of steps that I saw it take. It was almost as if it was not supposed to be walking around like that, but it had somehow figured out how to do it regardless. The thing was roughly two or three feet tall with an enlarged bulb-shaped head and a little belly in spite of how thin the rest of its frame was. In addition to its shape and motion, the thing seemed unreal, mostly because it didn't seem to reflect any light when it stepped into the light. It appeared to have no three-dimensional form at all, with its body almost blending right into its shadow and I could only really tell it had a solid form by the way that it moved and navigated the environment around it. I froze in place instantly when I saw it. My brain was unable to even process it. In a couple of steps, it exited the trees, stumbled across the patch of grass to the street, and then sort of fumbled down forward towards the sewer drain on the side of the road. I'm not sure what I did, if anything, but as soon as it hit the curb, it rose back up and looked over at me. I couldn't see its face or anything at all, just this bizarre black shape moving unbelievably awkward. I really can't stress this enough. Its movements were ridiculously uncoordinated. What happened next is what sent me fleeing into the woods. Upon seeing me, this malformed shadow child thing did this quick twisted turn towards me, dropping down on all fours and becoming a much more animal-like shape when it did. I again have no idea how to describe the motion as it was so unnatural, but when its turn was complete, the thing had somehow become what I can only describe as a shadow dog, cat, or bear. I know that sounds crazy, but I can't describe it in any other way than that. It stood on all fours like a predatory animal, but I couldn't make out any definition on it with the way it didn't catch the light. This thing, it didn't just go from being human-like to being human on all fours. I mean, it genuinely became something else, as far as I could tell. As soon as the creature hit all fours and was no longer humanoid, 
Its eyes flashed yellow at me, and it let out this loud shriek. Not a growl, not a bark, not a snarl, not even an animal-like roar, or even a hissing, but a legitimate shriek that sounded neither like a person nor an animal. The sound started quiet, then rose quickly, almost as if it was winding up or under pressure and was just painfully being forced. Its scream had a certain harshness to it, as if it might have had something seriously wrong with its vocal cords. I remember the thing had a weird, almost scared vulnerability in the sound it made, which contrasted the harshness and tone, as well as the defensive stance the creature took. All this took place in just a few seconds, maybe 10 at most, from the time the thing exited the tree line to the time it turned around, postured, shrieked at me, and sent me running back into the woods. I didn't look back. I didn't try to be quiet through the forest. I just ran as fast as I could. The sound it made chilled me to the core, but in hindsight, I think the flashing eyes bothered me more than the sound because it seemed so expected. The flashing, glowing eyes trope is precisely what I've heard in other people's stories and never seem to believe. I never made it to my friend's house that night, and I never mentioned this to anybody ever since. Second Sighting, Central Florida, 2006 in spring, I believe, early night, 8 p.m. The second sighting is much briefer, and as I mentioned before, I am 90% sure that it's the same thing, but not entirely. I'll keep this short and tell you simply that I was out camping, went for a walk along a trail, and watching my girlfriend hop from rock to rock across the river. I heard a sound to my left, and when I turned to look, I saw an extremely thin, skinny, black nubbed leg, possibly a tail, disappear behind a tree as if an animal running away from something. I ran over this time, but I found nothing, and I didn't mention it to my girlfriend. No experiences or weird sounds that night, and no more encounters for several years. Third Sighting Eastern Shore of Virginia, June 8, 2019, late night, 11 p.m. I was at a party at my friend's house celebrating her birthday because she is one of those people in their 30s that still gets excited about those things. My friend lives with her husband in a farmhouse surrounded by open fields for a couple of acres in any direction, surrounded, of course, by a thick forest. I decided I wanted a smoke, so I went out the front door and onto the porch. I glanced up, and out into the field in front of the house, there it was, roughly 50 yards out and bumbling through the field towards the trees. For a split second, I could see the unmistakable shape of this weird shadow child thing. It was just the same as before, large head and belly, unbelievably thin arms and legs, and again, reflecting absolutely no light at all. I was mid-step when I glanced up and lost track of where I was stepping causing me to fall forward. I managed to catch myself as I barely fell, and I must have made a sound, because when I looked back up, the thing was on all fours and quickly running like a dog off into the woods. I reiterate, this thing did not move on all fours like a person in any way. It moved like an animal, with knees bent backwards. I was too far, and it happened too fast for me to tell if it had hands and feet this time. I started to walk out and looked around for a bit when someone came outside and not wanting to tell anyone, I just went back to the party. I must have been distant the rest of the night. I ended up leaving the party relatively early and went back home to start obsessing about it as I have been for about a week now. My dad is a massive nerd and alien enthusiast, and would always talk to me about the probability of existence of other intelligent life. As a child, I was equally fascinated, but never really scared, and always wondered about my own chances of maybe meeting an alien. At the time of my encounter, I was around seven or eight years old, and had never really known anything about abductions or aliens being scary. To me, they were just something neat. Because of how my house was situated, I always figured that it would be difficult for any visitors to find me parking because the train was very steep with dense pine forests. I live in a small town in Colorado and my house is in a valley and on the top of a hill. 
closely wedged into the side of a mountain. My street is extremely quiet, and there are only three homes that were very close to my own. They were also all vacation homes, so they are usually vacant. There are no lights on my street, and it gets basically no traffic, so there is never anyone around other than my own family. When this all happened, I shared a room with my sister, who is notoriously a heavy sleeper, known to sleep through fire alarms and thunderstorms. Meanwhile, I was a very light sleeper, and still am. At some point, I began feeling extremely scared. This feeling of fear and dread became a regular occurrence, happening once or twice a week. I was never a kid who worried about monsters under the bed or in the closet, so it was weird I suddenly began feeling like something else was in my room. At night I would hear the door handle turn, followed by strange chirping sounds that would stop as soon as I moved. The sounds scared me, and I began sleeping completely under the covers making sure none of me was exposed to the outside world. Soon after I began sleeping like this, I would feel something tapping the covers. Oftentimes, the tapping and chirping happened together, and like always, stopped if I moved around. Now, anyone would chalk this up to the imagination of a seven-year-old. That's what my parents thought, and honestly, sometimes I wonder if that's really all it was. But then I think about one particular night that makes me nearly certain that there was something other than my sister in my room. One night, my parents went out for dinner and hired a babysitter. It was a very normal night and the sitter was super nice. She read us a bedtime story and actually ended up falling asleep herself. She was on my sister's bed, which was in the middle of the room, and my bed was up against the wall that had the same door that goes to the room. Because the sitter was there, I felt safer, safe enough to sleep in the room with my head above covers. I was still a little scared and struggled to fall asleep and ended up staring at the wall for a while. It was at this time that I felt the sudden fear and impending doom. The door handle turned, making its little sounds as the door slowly pushed open. I was paralyzed with fear too afraid to move and hide under the covers, because I thought the sudden movement might put me in danger. A tall white thing slinked into the room. It was around seven feet tall, super thin. Its skin was sort of translucent and had a greenish gray hue, an extremely muted version of those glow-in-the-dark stars that you put on bedroom ceilings. Its head wasn't a super dramatic angular teardrop shape, it was more of a really long, slight pear shape, still rounded, super sunken in, with defined bone structure and heavy shadows. Its eyes were like empty voids, no reflection or obvious dimension. They really just seemed like large holes in its face, empty sockets. There were no visible eyelids, a small, narrow bump of a nose, and a small, undefined mouth. Its arms and torso were very long and thin, and I couldn't see its fingers from where it was. It moved very quickly and fluently, going right to my sister's bed. It stared for a bit. Maybe it was confused by the presence of the babysitter. It simply watched, moving around the bed slowly. I was horrified. I wanted to scream and run and hide, but I was too scared. All I could do was stare as it circled my sister's bed. After a couple of minutes, it left, quickly making its way to the door, slipping out of my room and closing it as it left. It paid no attention to me during the entirety of the encounter, and when it was out of my room, I heard a couple of chirps, quickly followed by silence. At this point, I was finally able to bury myself under the blankets, where I eventually passed out. My sister and I never got hurt, and I don't think they ever did much more than observe. I'm certain that my sister didn't even know, because she was such a heavy sleeper. In hindsight, I think it was mostly interested in my sister, and I don't feel its presence in my room very often since we stopped sharing rooms. I'm not really sure what it was, 
I don't feel like it 100% fits the common gray description, but I feel like it's something similar enough. This experience still affects me today, and while I don't suffer from any crippling fear or PTSD, I still occasionally get scared. I still sleep completely under the covers, and I always make sure I have a flashlight with me under the covers in case of emergency. I really don't think there was any malicious intent with the thing at all, but I'm scared anyways. I wish I could just brush it off, as an overactive imagination or a sleep paralysis, but I don't think that's what it was. I still occasionally hear the chirping, and sometimes I feel the tapping. I wonder why it visits. Sometimes I think it just likes to check up on the kid who it saw every once in a while. Maybe one day I'll try to muster up the courage to try to confront it, if it's ever around. <laughs>